The harvest is in full swing as Mina Creek cane grower Joe Zapala works the rows of freshly cut ratoons, hauling his new purpose-designed stool splitter and fertiliser box. It might be midwinter in the red soil country of Innisfail's hinterland, but the rain clouds still never quite disappear completely in one of Queensland's wettest growing districts. Farming sugarcane in the lush catchment of the Johnston River system is not without its challenges. One of the challenges, being overcome with the help of the Australian Government Reef Program, is to design farm machinery that keeps pace with environmental best practice in applying subsurface nutrients to a new crop. We used to drop our fertiliser on the top. With the reef rescue money we were able to update our machines to put our fertiliser underground. What we've also done by doing, putting it underground I've gone from two row application to three row application and also with this box I was able to have one where I could vary the row spacing from, from five foot out to five foot ten and I could put it either beside the stool or split the stool. Now to split the stool I used to, I do that now because I have to apply comfort oil for cane grub control. The modified fertiliser box and stool splitter are examples of how the Australian Government Reef Program, originally known as Reef Rescue, is working with cane farmers in Queensland's wet tropics to limit runoff of nutrient into the Great Barrier Reef Lagoon. Joe worked closely with an agricultural equipment manufacturer to get the design of the coulters and tines on the stool splitter just right for his red soil country. And by using the stool splitter, fertiliser is applied underground, ensuring nutrients get to the root system of the plant and none is wasted. As you can see, this is red soil. It sticks very well to the coulters. It's a little bit damp at the moment, but it sticks and also because it, stay, it sticks and it's not very abrasive, it, um, it won't cut the trash. When it doesn't cut the trash, the trash builds up and binds and locks everything and jams. But with the t modification in the stool, with the, with the tie and with the bigger coulters, we were able to apply it underground in the, through the trash blanket. Efficient application of nutrients is just one area where Joe Zapala is playing a role in minimising the impacts of farming on the Great Barrier Reef. He's taking that same progressive approach to herbicide management too, applying successfully to Reef Rescue to co-fund a variable rate spray controller to cut down on herbicide usage. The system has been installed on a high-rise sprayer that does much of the work on farm and the direct result is improved accuracy in spray rates and efficiency in application. It's a win both for the environment and productivity and that also helps him on his hillier country. This is an older machine that we converted into a high rise oh, eight years ago. And we had just standard controllers that were not very accurate. They did the job, but they weren't very accurate. So what we did, we applied for more funding and we got a, a variable rate controller. And what it does is we mounted a wheel sensor on the back of the wheel here. So we get accuracy at your ground speed so once you've got accuracy with your ground speed, you start getting accuracy with your application rates. The accuracy in application is what I was really looking for. And what happens is, is when you go down a hill, the machine tends to accelerate a bit. So you, it would uh, increase your application rates. So you would get an even application of herbicides. And when you start to climb a hill, if you've got full tanks and it's a bit of a steep hill, it might slow down the tractor it's hard to pull up the hill. So what we would do then, it would do then, as the tractor slows down, it would slow the application rate down. What we have here is um, an old Hardy spray tank. It's about 25 years old. Um, what we did was use part of that controllers from that tractor for when I'm not using it in the slack, in the cane season. I'm able to retrofit it to an existing spray tank, use the same controllers and able to use it on multiple tractors. I can use a cab tractor or an open tractor and we're able to fit it to this old tank just to get accuracy again in knockdowns because that's my mainly use hot knockdowns in, in our um, returns. So yeah, it was, it was easy to do, just a bit of nutting out, but yeah, got there. I was able to update our tank. The flow control system and tank are coupled with an urban farm spray rig that has been engineered specifically to meet the highest environmental standards. The Ratoon tracking head travels at ground level and the spray bar is constructed with multiple low drift nozzles 
to ensure the herbicide only goes where it's needed. What we have here is what Irvin calls the octopus legs. Uh, we have six nozzles on each spray bar. I use ADI all buzz low drift nozzles. Um, with the variable rate controller, it gives me good ac rate of application, accuracy, and l run lower pressures, so I get uh, less drift. Also, with the uh, Irvin legs, there's a, this is their new style leg. Um, tracks a lot better than what the previous legs do, don't bounce around as much, so I get less drift and less burn. The continuation of the Australian Government Reef Program until 2017 is just the news farmers like Joe Zapala wanted to hear. He already has another project in the planning stage, a dual herbicide sprayer aimed at meeting the core objectives of the program, to limit runoff of nutrients, sediment and herbicides into the Great Barrier Reef Lagoon. What we're funding next round is a dual herbicide sprayer. Um, it's going to be a two year project because I want to make sure that I get something that suits my applications and my work. So what I'm going to do is have a look around and see what's out there and hopefully have something running in two years time. Plus I want to use the variable rate controllers for accuracy again in application.